Welcome to the Helix Hour, brought to you in part by Design39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for the Helix Hour are provided by Rode Microphones. Now, let's talk some Helix. Hey everyone, happy Friday to you all. Welcome to the Helix Hour. It was a rare time for us to broadcast, but uh, we had to jump on something pretty quick here. As you can see behind me, I've got the uh, PowerCab 112 Plus active speaker system, and I've only logged probably between yesterday when it arrived and today, probably no more than one hour's time on it. But the, the cool thing about doing some of these broadcasts, as soon as I get gear, you know, sometimes it can be very scary because you don't know what you're getting into. Uh, without you know having the learning curve and things like that as well too but it's fun it's kind of fun flying by the seat of your pants not knowing the gear and I kind of learn it with you guys and I think that's a lot of fun and it's it's the, the scare factor it's like almost you know doing your first gig and you know with a new band and you're nervous up on stage um, that's kind of the feeling you get when you jump into a piece of gear and go live with it However, you know, that being said, I feel relatively comfortable uh, with the short time I've had on it. And the thing I found with Line 6 gear from, from Helix through the HX effects, through the Variax, which I have in my hands here right now, you can see a little bit, I find that the learning curve is really, really quick. I'm one of those guys who doesn't like to have to learn gear and learn, you know, computer tech. Not, well, the computer, I, do, I work with computers for a living, but I don't want to have to learn computer gear um, and that's what always scares me away from stuff like that. I've just found, which I'm sure a lot of you will echo my statements, the learning curve on all of this stuff is really quick and fun. Um, you can jump in and go, or you can dive in, you know, and, and go to the deep end and do all kinds of crazy experimentation. So we're going to have a brief look today at the uh, PowerCab 112 Plus, which is back there. And you might think it sounds a little funny by having a microphone on it. Why would you mic a thing like this? Well, you can, but I'm doing it to give you a little bit better sound today to show you what the speaker can sound like. It's not right on the speaker. It's off the. Uh, it's off the maybe by about two to three or four inches, and it's just going to give you a bit of a uh, more realistic instead of you know webcam or cell phone audio. It'll give you a little bit more of a response. And my first reaction to hearing it miked, um, which is keep in mind too mono, right? Uh, I've been spoiled by running Helix to you guys on the show here uh, in a stereo environment, and you get really used to that very quickly. And you think when you go back to mono, it's going to throw you for a loop and kind of like, okay, what do I got here? I'm only getting half the, the fidelity. Miking it up in a mono environment, it still sounds great. Very, very warm, uh, spongy, uh, sounds like a real amp in the room. That's the, the common term. Everybody wants the amp in the room feel. This certainly gets it. A bunch of people jumping over here um, in the chat already. Let's say hi to them real quick. We're going to come back. I'm going to read you some frequently asked questions uh, from some of the staff at um, Line 6. Uh, Jack Martin's here saying, hey, Eric, love the stream. Keep up the work. Thank you. Appreciate that. Charles Ireson, good evening from Germany. Fantastic. Thank you for um, for joining. And I hope I, I pronounced that right. Uh, Al Wallen, hello from Minnesota. Real Camp 56, good day, Eric. Looking forward to hear this product. Uh, Tvod, uh, thank you, Chad. That was very nice. Chad Chad Boston with another $9.99, $10 su uh, super chat donation. Thank you. That is very, very kind of you. Very kind. I appreciate that immensely. I will buy uh, I'll buy some uh, some coffees and and some treats for the family today. That's awesome. Uh, Brian Watson is here. Hey Eric, looking forward to this. T Vod says hi from Bolton um, from Bolton in the UK. Did I say that right? Yeah, Bolton. Uh, Scott Johans is here. Keep up the great work, Eric. Thank you. And Chad says, come on, give this man some likes. Thank you, Chad. That's, that's very kind of you. Jack Martin, I finally, after a couple months watching the stream and saving my money, I'm finally getting the EVH 5150 112 combo tomorrow. Can't wait. Fantastic, Jack. That's awesome. And speaking of 112s, the, you know, people, here's the thing. Keep in mind with 112s, whether it's EVH or it's line six here or anything of the, of the nature, um, don't go into the into the tone expecting to have the same um, impact and, and oomph of a 412. It's just, you know, 112 is one-fourth, right? Uh, or, or, you know, a 412 cabinet, I should say. So you won't get that same impact. However, what the, what the benefit of this cabinet is, speaker, number one, it's so light to carry around. It's like 35 pounds. So you lug that with your Helix or your other modeler, whatever your modeler may be, and you really got a small rig. For people like me that have downsized my vehicles, now I drive a Camaro, I can't stick a 412 in my Camaro. It's just not going to happen. I would have a kind of a hard time getting a 212 in there, maybe in the back seat. I can take this now and a Helix and a guitar and a gig bag or a case or whatever in my Camaro, and I could go play a gig. I could go jam with buddies. It's awesome. 
Um, and uh, I can't see if I can pronounce that name. Uh, MTB, whatever. I'm sorry. He says, nice guitar. Thank you. And I, it's kind of a long name there. Uh, Nick Corduroy says, uh, hi from Cleethorpes, UK. Lots of UK. Andrew Bonica is here. Hey, man. Switch my accounts. Laugh out loud. Okay. Uh, nice to have you, Andrew. And we're going to talk some very acts, uh, which is your deal, very, very soon as well, too. Um, Andrew's going to be coming up on the show. He's from Line 6, as a lot of you will know that, obviously, in the chat, if you're if you're uh, regulars. Uh, Andrew will be on here not this Sunday, which is Mother's Day. The following Sunday is Frank Rashad from uh, from Line 6. And then the following Sunday will be Andrew. We're going to have some great discussion. Um, Eduardo Marino Porto, from hello from Brazil. Paul Perkins, hey, man, this is great. Good to see you, Paul. Uh, looking forward to seeing Oz Fox on the show tonight. That is correct. Oz Fox from Striper is on... Uh, the regular Aviation Gear TV show tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're switching it back. We're switching it to a 60-minute uh, uh, window as well, too, from 90. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Pino, hello all. Uh, Lee, Lee Whitaker, hey there. Doing thanks for doing this. Clean sounds uh, too, please. Yes, I'm starting with clean. Just for you, well, not just for you, but for a lot of you. I'm starting off with acoustic. I'm not going to go too crazy on heavy metal today, but I am going to play a little tiny bit of Van Halen style because that's what a lot of people expect on this channel. Not all of you new people, but um, a lot of the regulars. Um, Chad Boston says, love this channel. Sending you and your family love. Charles Irison. I am wondering if it's better than the FRFRs. I, I think you're going to find that. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flag uh, right where Ch uh, Chad Boston is saying hi to Andrew. I'm going to try to highlight that. And I'm going to st stop talking as far as the chat for a moment. We've got around 33 people watching. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to read just a couple frequently asked questions. This is from Digital Igloo, our friend uh, from Line 6. And obviously this was posted over on the gear page. I'm going to try to read this as quickly as possible. I'm a, I'm a quick talker as it is, but I'm going to probably be a little faster, so you may want to watch this back on half speed after the fact, but it's very, very important. That's why I'm starting with this. These are some frequently asked questions for people sitting on the fence about purchasing uh, one of the, the either the 112 or the 112 Plus. So let's go. Uh, so are these the Helix FRFR speakers we've been requesting for like years? The answer to that is no. Power cap is way beyond your bog standard FRFR speaker. When paired with any modeler, it's an active speaker system that can deliver a much more authentic amp in the room playing experience. However, when set to flat mode and um, whether you load IRs, uh, impulse responses, into power cap or your modeler, power cap amplifies the sound of your presets as they are, similar to a traditional FRFR speaker system, but with a response and feel closer to that of an actual guitar amp. Power cap works as both a backline amp and a wedge speaker thanks to its integrated kickstands. Tips back on about a 45 degree angle or more, which is very, very cool. You click and snap. I love them. Uh, oh, and it looks like a guitar amp instead of a PA speaker. So that's cool. So yeah, you know, it's that little thing too. It just it feels, it looks like an amp. You know, it looks like a duck, uh, quacks like a duck, smells like a duck or whatever the, the cliche is. Well, it looks like an amp. It is an amp. Uh, what's going on under the hood? Power cab doesn't utilize cab modeling. It uses true speaker modeling. Speaker modeling is Line 6's proprietary method of du duplicating the frequency and behavior of speaker-driven drivers by themselves, independently of the cabinets in which they happen to be loaded. Imagine having an empty 112 speaker cabinet where you can swap out the green back for a cream back or a swamp thing or an El Nico blue instantly in your clothes. Um, and speaking of which, the cream back is my favorite speaker. I'll show you that with some of the Van Halen patches. Lots of people watching. I really appreciate this. I don't own a Helix. Will Power Cab work with my Kemper, Atomic, or Fractal Box? And this is what's really nice. Absolutely. And any other modeler as well, including Pod HD 500X. In fact, if your modeler has a 48 kilohertz AES EBU out or SPDIF out with RCA to XLR uh, uh, M adapter with Power Cab 112 Plus, you can run everything digitally with no additional DEA, digital analog, digital conversion, or latency. And if your modeler sends MIDI messages, you can even sync Power Cab 112 Plus presets and use your IRs with your modeler or, pre or Profiler's presets. What are the six, I'm going to say this quickly, what are the six speakers and are the models based on? Your Celest Celestian Vintage 30, your Celestian Greenback uh, 25, the so Celestian G12 M65, so I use that one a lot and some of my other uh, uh, IRs and whatnot. Uh, Jensen P12Qs, uh, the Eminent Swamp Thing Patriot Series, and the Celestian Bluebell on Nico. What's the difference between the Power Cab 112 and Power Cab 112 Plus? This is very important. It's a question I get asked a lot. Um, other than the price difference, and I think it's listed on here as well, too. I think you're looking at uh, 599 yes, 599 uh, US Street price and 799 uh, for obviously the 112 Plus, which you see behind me. And here's what the difference is other than $200. Um, the Power Cab 112 Plus adds the following 2 inch 128 uh, by 32 pixel LCD display right on the top of the unit, 128 user preset locations, 128 user IR impulse response locations, MIDI in and out for recalling presets, IRs, and most parameters can also be recalled uh, via USB, AES EBU and the Line 6 Link digital in and out, and additional input for use as a front of house monitor post DSP. 
uh, power cab edit connectivity, USB audio interface for jamming along with monitor and backing tracks from your Mac or PC. And I'll pause there for a second. Earlier today, I um, hooked up the USB cable to uh, the computer, my Mac here, and I was actually just watching a YouTube video and I chose the power cap as my output source. Sure enough, um, I'm playing a YouTube video through my app. So you want to work on a guitar lesson and you run it to hook it up to your Mac or PC, you'll have to control your volume on, on the, let's say we're using YouTube, control the volume on the YouTube video and then control your volume of your Helix, get it in a nice comfortable uh, volume and you can jam along and you got it right through your amp. So it's, it's awesome in case you don't have really good computer speakers or things like that. So it's a good jam buddy. Uh, let me see. Did I, I said that user selectable mic modeling and distance on the XLR output power cab 112 uh, output uses an SM58 model only and the power cab 112 plus is about two pounds heavier. And so I'm thinking around somewhere around 35 pounds. And that's one of the things I talked about in, over on the gear page. I gave a quick, you know, two minute review and the, um, the weight is very light and it's balanced. It looks good, feels good, uh, good balance. Pick it up. He's not going to give yourself a hernia or a back problem, uh, lifting it up. Uh, how loud does it get? 250 Watts total. That's 200 Watts to the woofer and 50 Watts to the compression driver. Uh, and, and he says, wait, 250 watts doesn't sound like much. Aren't there other speakers that, with, are, that are thousands of watts? 250 real watts, not marketing watts. That's really good. Uh, the operative spec here is SPL, sound pressure level. Power cab reaches 125 dB SPL handily. You should have no problems playing next to the drummer. And that's the question people are going to ask you. Is it going to compete with the drummer? Uh, what is the reference? What's the reference speaker used? Power cab features a custom designed eight ohm, 12 inch coaxial speaker that uses a guitar style cone as opposed to a PA, PA style cone with a two inch high temperature voice coil loose based on the eminence beta 12 CX format. The one comp inch compressor compressor compression driver is a selection CDX one 1010, which is used only for flat mode monitor feeds and user IR modes. It's not utilized for all speaker modes. There's just a few more things here. And I'm going to try to skip over a few of them because I know you guys want to hear this. Very, very, a very good question. How do I load the IRs into PowerCab 112 Plus? You use the free PowerCab editor software. And I'm going to jump over to a quick gallery to show you that. I didn't even know, I d hadn't read this yesterday. And believe it or not, I didn't know it ex the, the software uh, was available until I read the manual. And yes, mark this down as a, as a newsflash, I read a manual. And the cool thing is, I have the manual sitting in, in the paper and the plastic that came with the amp. I didn't even open that yet because I like to keep it in pristine cr condition. I read the manual online. So let's have a look at the gallery real quick, and you're going to see some screenshots I took just of the software and uh, updating firmware and things like that as well, too. All right, so here we go. There just some real quick, fast screenshots going by. That's actually what the, um, uh, the cab editor looks like, and there's obviously the uh, firmware update, things like that. Um, yeah, and if people are asking for some guitar, I'm going to get into the guitar right away for you. So just give me a quick idea what the software looks like. So let's jump into some guitar. How about we do that? One second here. Hang on. Here we go. Uh, where are we at? Okay, we're back. I had to find out what screen we're on. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm gonna use the Variax Line Six Variax on an acoustic patch, and right now on the uh, on the Power Cab 112, I'm using it in flat mode. So what you're gonna hear, microphone in front of the cabinet. I'm not running direct to the mixer uh, like like I normally would do out of the Helix. Strictly uh, microphone in front of it, about four inches off the cone. Okay, one second. You're picking up. You're probably hearing my room mic or this mic. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off this microphone. Here we go.
So what do you think of that? That's that's the acoustic mode of Variax. Uh, using a, uh, I forget what model of acoustic, up in the neck position, uh, an old Martin, I believe it is, uh, direct and flat response. So let's go over and have a look at the chat. And I'm going to jump, uh, change guitars in a second, because I want a guitar with a much hotter output pickup. I'm going to grab one of my Wolfgangs, and we're going to try some uh, flat responses. And then we're going to go into the speaker emulation modes. And I'm probably only going to use one of those. I'm going to use probably the cream back, because that's the one I'm most comfortable with at the moment. So let's quickly go over to the chat, and we're getting a lot of comments. So I may not be able to get to every all of them today. Uh, so Richard Lind is here. Hi, Richard, here from Holland. Nice to have you. Uh, T-Vod got his power cab today. Fantastic. DJ Astrick is here saying good morning, everyone. Terry's, is, Terry's here, says needs, co needs coffee. Send coffee. Yes, coffee in hand. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Coffee Drinker says, speaking of a coffee drinker, looking forward to hearing this. I also have the Alto TS-210, uh, and I'm curious how this compares. I'm going to use one of uh, Coffee Drinker's Van Halen and Van Hagar patches, which is utilized uh, for um, a very, the, you know, a 5150 style patch, and it's very stereocentric, and it sounds great in mono, which really blew my mind. So I'm going to play that in a moment as well. Um, Andrew Bonica says that, uh, that was nice. Uh, that was me saying nice guitar. Okay, there, I gotcha. I'll leave the stream running in the background, but I'll be out in my office. I uh, can't wait to see Oz. That's going to be fun tonight. Yes, it will. Uh, Richard Lind, I have the LT, LL2T as power cab much better. I don't know about the other, so I, I can't compare. Maybe some people in the chat may have the comparisons already. Uh, and Jack Martin says, any here, uh, anyone see Ozzy this summer? No, I haven't seen Ozzy yet. Um, Paul, Paul Perkins says, uh, howdy, howdy, brother. Brian Wasson. Hey, Eric, I'm thinking of getting an LBX2. Is it loud enough for medium to smaller gigs? Yes, it is for sure. And we'll talk more about that probably over the course of the weekend as well, but it definitely will. Okay, so what I'm going to do here in a second, I'm going to, um, uh, and Keith, uh, Keith says he wishes it was a 212. I think it's a nice start. You, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's, a, it's who knows what's coming with those guys, as we saw yesterday with, uh, with more press releases with, um, uh, Yamaha Guitar Group acquiring Ampeg. Who knows what's coming? Uh, you know, Line 6 and the team are bringing new things out all the time. So who knows what's next? I think uh, we could be surprised. And I don't know anything, so don't read into that. Okay, so we're going to jump over to... Um, let's grab a, d a real dirty guitar, okay? So one second here. Talk amongst yourselves. How is everyone? Okay, let's get rid of this. And I'm going to grab a Wolfgang, which should be ready to go almost. And we will stay in flat response mode. Okay, one second. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple of my main patches that I play on a normal everyday basis. And I know I'm going to bring my volume back because I had that acoustic volume cranked. And I do not want to clip and I do not want to blow your ears off and I don't want to make it sound bad. Okay, so I'm going to go to a patch which is up on Custom Tone, uh, which is called Eric Triple. I believe that one's up there. Okay. And let's see what we got. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, so what this patch consists of is a three-channel patch, uh, clean, distorted, and uh, uh, real heavy, uh, like you would have in a 5150 amplifier. Okay, we're not clipping. We should be good. Okay, so I'll play a little bit of clean here for a second. Turn off this microphone. Here we're again. We're still in flat response mode. So there's a little bit of a dirty patch. That's one I use a lot. I'm going to go over, like I was telling you a second ago, I'm going to show you a patch that was normally utilized for a very, very, very stereo patch. 
Uh, this is uh, Coffee Drinkers Brian Cazell's uh, Van Hagar, and I'm going to show you how it sounds in a, in a flat response mode, still mono, and it's being mic'd. So if it sounds good with this environment, imagine what it'll sound like for you there in the room. Let's go find it. Uh, bear with me here. Here we go, Van Hagar. Okay. So there you go. That's a patch, like I say, that's really intended for a big, big stereo separation. And I personally feel that it sounds very good in a mo mono environment that's coming out in a flat range response. Um, nothing, nothing processed on it. So what we're doing is we're just basically amplifying what we've done on the Helix. So in a moment here, I'm going to jump over. I'm going to have to, you'll have to excuse me. I'm going to get out of the chair and I'm going to switch it over to um, a speaker modeling mode. And what you would do in a case like that, so you got your favorite patch. Let's say you're using a cab block or an impulse response uh, instead of the cab block, you need to bypass those. Uh, and then when you go into speaker emulation mode, and here's a perfect way to tell if you've done something wrong. Let's say you're playing on, uh, on flat mode, right? You've got an amp and you've got a speaker block or an IR. And you know what it's like if you're using headphones or uh, reference monitors, and I'm pointing into imaginary space here, reference monitors. And if you were to turn off your cab, you notice it goes fuzzy fizzy as some people will say and that's just because now you've basically turned off your speaker and you're not going to anything right so that if you did that through this you'd notice it right away as well too so bypass your blocks and go into um, your speaker emulation mode so we're going to do that right now so uh, give me one second and by the way too my volume on that amplifier is probably at about two uh, and it's very, very loud in the room. That's one of the things I've, I've seen mixed reviews online, people complaining about volume. And th there's no lack of volume in this thing. There's definitely no lack of it. Uh, an important thing too, um, Eric Klein has mentioned this on numerous occasions, twice on my show, that you want to give it a good clean signal. So you want to make sure that your output of your Helix or your modeler is uh, a line level signal. And you also want to want the monitor the volume control on there as well too, because it lights up. It'll go from like uh, green to yellow to red. You want to make sure that you're getting a nice consistent green level to the uh, to the amplifier. Clean signal in, clean signal out. It'll work tremendously. Okay, so let's go over now and grab some of our patches that are no IRs. And I'm gonna grab. Um, let's. I think I have the triple as well. Okay. Okay. So here we go. This one is my triple patch that I played just a moment ago uh, in flat mode. This is going to be using the cream back uh, speaker setting. Wow, that was loud. Okay, so we don't want to do that again, do we? <laughs> that was very loud. It's very, very loud. Okay, let's bring it down. Okay, here's Nick Bell's patch from Line 6. He wrote this one quite some time ago. Um, it's basically your old Marshall, Eddie's uh, Plexi Marshall just cranked up. Not a lot of gain to this one, and this, it makes you play really different, but I really like this with the cream back setting on there. Let's crank this one up a bit more. So your vintage Van Halen. Okay. 
So there you go. I'm going to jump back over to the chat for a second because I know I've missed a bunch. We've got around 56 people watching right now. This is fantastic. Uh, so we left off at uh, Brian Watson talking about the 5150s. Uh, Terry says, um, let me see here. We left off. Andrew Bonica, he has. He says, Richard, it's a different product and experience. The best way to tell if it's right for you is to play it in person for yourself. I still love my L3T speakers and plan to use both products. A Mississippi Treasure Hunter is here. It says, hello, Eric. Coffee Drinker says, howdy, Paul. Uh, let me see here. And and he's a coffee drinker saying, yeah, you can even hook up your ISP Theta Pro to it. Um, and we, we could play some guitar for Charles there. Uh, Craig is here. I just missed him. I just I scrolled too fast. Craig, your guitar wannabe. Sorry, I missed you there. Um, where is he? He says, hey, now, uh, Richard Lynn, can you demo also with regular guitars? I want to hear the difference. Yep. So there we go. I'm always like 10 minutes behind in chat. So I think we caught up there. I've got a real um, uh, a high output guitar right now as well, too. Uh, Jack Martin says, sounds great. Jack Martin, yeah, AVH. Uh, uh, Eric, how many guitars do you think you have? Um, never enough. Never enough. Quite a few, though. Um, and Jack says, sounds like a little bit uh, like Metallica. Uh, how, how do you like the Helix? Do you need to buy any program? How much of the Helix do you need to buy any programs? Uh, they vary, and obviously here my Canadian dollar is uh, is a little bit, of, you know, obviously a little different than what you'd experience over uh, in, North, in the United States. Uh, so there you go. Actually, Brian says uh, Helix is nine ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine. No other programs needed. So thank you, Brian. You actually answered the question for me because I didn't have the exact price. Um, can you get feedback noise too, like a normal tube amp? Sorry for my English. That's from Richard. Yes, you can get some feedback on it for sure. It'll, it'll, you know, you can actually work the feedback and, uh, you know, just by controlling the, the, you know, like sustain on the guitar. And I've done it in here as well too. And I did it a moment ago by accident. That was, that was horrible feedback though, but you can actually get, you know, musical feedback from it. Um, that's Richard's questions. Brandon is here. Brandon Frenzel, Mr. Powercap himself. Nice to have you. Uh, Brandon and I surely hope I'm doing some justice to your product. Uh, this is this is more of a fun. Let's have some fun and look at it. This is not the thing I want you to base your decision on purchasing. I the best way to base your decision on purchasing is like they said earlier in the chat. Go to your local authorized Line Six dealer and play one. And you, trust me, the minute you play it, you will love it. Because when I got mine yesterday, plugged it in, 15 minutes into it, I was like, wow, this is really really cool. And that uh, you know sold right on the moment I played. That will do it for you as well too. And maybe it's not for you, but you will find out in person. So try one at your local guitar store. Uh, let me see here. Um, Jamie, the law is here. Uh, he says, yes, with Helix, I would suggest a Digitech Freakout pedal for controlled feedback at any volume level. Yeah, that's very cool as well, too. Um, Jose V is here saying, finally able to log in from my office. Uh, Pino says, nice playing. Thank you. I appreciate that. And a few people saying the stream might be freezing. Um, you know, I, I, I have fast internet, but I'm going to have to upgrade if it's still continuing to freeze. Um, okay. Hopefully it's okay. Um, yeah, Terry says, I'm having some internet problems. I do appreciate everybody um, if uh, you're hanging in there. And uh, let me see here. Um, Michael uh, says, uh, hey, Eric, great to join. Waiting for a pair of PC uh, plus uh, power cab uh, because of stereo. Nice. If you have a, two of these things, that'd be fantastic. And that's what I'm planning on doing in the near future, running two of them in the back. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's freezing up on all three, but hoping it stays clear. That's from Jamie the Law. So that's, that's what we have here. Very, 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 very simple plug and play type of a system. If I was to recommend one over the other power cap or power cap, uh, the 112 or 112 plus, I would recommend the 112 plus for the sole fact that one, it's not a huge difference in price. We're only talking $200 difference. Uh, that's not crazy as far as that. And the features that you get um, are absolutely phenomenal with the power, with the uh, IRs that you can load into it, the presets alone, all that kind of thing. I'm going to see if I can go ahead. One other patch here. Where do they have it here? 
Uh, just going to give you like kind of a Fender Twin kind of sound. Let's see if we can jump over to that. And that's one second. I'm just going to refresh over here on the other screen and see if I can kind of clear up this uh, internet connection. It's probably not going to, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, we're getting some drop frames too, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, I'm going to be making a phone call to the, uh, the uh, cable provider today. All right, and let's jump back over here to the Fender Twin and let's see what we have. And I'm probably going to wrap you guys up here in a moment because the connection is seeming to be horrible. And I don't normally have that problem, which is uh, very strange. Okay, so we're going to be using the Creamback uh, emulation in the, uh, in, the, in the cabinet. And we're using uh, nothing else. And actually just reverb. Okay, let's turn off my mic. back over to Dirty Patch. And I think we'll wrap it up in the Dirty Patch. Uh, just to give you a really good idea of what's coming. Like I say, this is fun. This is just a kind of a first uh, first look at, for me, at the cabinet. And um, um, it's kind of giving you a first response kind of thing. My, my feedback, you know, kind of uh, a look at it. I'm doing something, hopefully, hopefully in the near future with Jason Sedites. Everyone knows Jason Sedites. He's a master of patch creation. Uh, he's a really cool dude and he lives practically 40 minutes, 30 minutes away from me. So we're hooking up for something else uh, aside from this kind of stuff. But we're kind of toying the idea of doing a joint demo. And the cool thing is Jason's a much more versatile guitar player than I am. I'm kind of a one trick pony. Uh, I'm not afraid to admit that. And I think the two of us with a little bit of dialogue back and forth and exploring so many tonal avenues, um, I think it'll, it'll help tremendously and give a very, very good. Yeah, we're, lo we're losing a lot of Internet. Sorry about that. Let's just say... Um, yeah, okay, so let's, we're losing the connection here. Okay, one second here. All right, so let's jump over to one more patch, and let's try this one second here. Let's go back to the triple. <laughs> Did it again. That one's a loud patch. That's a very loud patch. I gotta, That's one thing I have to do is control my volumes. <laughs> from heck obviously coming from the helix which is fantastic um volume uh the loudness this thing is, is definitely packed with power so don't let anybody tell you that there's not enough uh volume in this thing uh to to rock a small stage it, it'll keep up with your drummer keep up with your other guitar player it work as a very nice personal monitor for yourself um and actually there's a good question uh okay he says the video is getting better andrew says that uh and uh anxious nation says are you using any post eq no i'm not no post EQ and it's uh, obviously right on, on my mixer. Everything is dead flat. I'm using a Rode NT1 a microphone on the cab and the everything is dead flat up the center on the mixer. Um, let me see here. Uh, Terry says, if you're doing anything else wireless, just especially during a broadcast, don't always use direct wire for max bandwidth. Yes, I never go wireless. Never, 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 never. But in a case like this, um, you know, who knows what's going on upstairs and other, other rooms as well too. But no, I never use wireless. I always land. So that is pretty much my uh, my overall review. I want to give on this thing here for sure. Stay tuned to uh, the Facebook pages. I've got two pages, facebook.com slash the Helix Hour and also facebook.com slash EVH Gear TV. And I'm posting little snippets. I'm posting pictures and all that kind of great stuff as well too. And I'm sharing other videos as I see them as well too from other people in that are receiving their power caps. Uh, here again, I'm brand new with it. I uh, I don't know it that well yet, but I mean, there's not a heck of a lot to learn. The manual is pretty self-explanatory. There's great tutorials out there. Um, Paul Heinmarsh has got some great stuff on the Line 6 uh, YouTube page. So check that out and subscribe to them as well too. If you're new to my channel here as well too, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And I do apologize for some video issues here today. And I really hope you're not going to have that problem this evening with Oz Fox. We'll make sure to take some measures to prevent that. 
and uh, kick everybody off the internet here in the house for, <laughs> for 60 minutes. So listen, uh, that's that's basically it. And here again, too, please, uh, if, if this does make your decision to go purchase one, you know, and you go buy one, awesome. But don't let this uh, demonstration here sway you to not purchase one. This is a first look in the wild for me. Uh, it's And I don't know it that well, and I don't have the best controlled setting for it here yet. But I think it's overall, I'm, I'm rel relatively comfortable with it. I hope that helps you a little bit in your decision. Uh, read some more about it on the, uh, the Line 6 website. And before I let you go, I think so we're talking, we're connecting uh, Helix to this product, to the power cap. Uh, we're giving away a Helix LT a processor, and you can get that and you can find that in different many, many ways. Go to the Facebook page. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Facebook.com slash EVH Gear TV. There's a pin post at the top and you can enter to win. It's running for it's running for 30 days. There's probably somewhere around 25 days left. I forget how long it's been running. Uh, it's really simple. No purchase necessary. And important, important, important. Do not enter with a Hotmail address. That's all I've been doing is playing tech support for the better part of how long I've been running this contest. Hotmail is the worst when it comes to, uh, you know, contests and things like that because they filter everything that gets sent back to you as junk and you just won't get it. And I've been playing tech support uh, for a while and I just, I, I would love to help everybody. I just can't. Uh, so use anything other than the Hotmail address, enter, and there's different ways you can share a lucky URL and there's some social media sharing and things like that that can potentially help you get more chances to win. Uh, Richard Lynn says, great demo. Thanks. I'm going to check out your channel. I appreciate that. Thank you. And again, too, a few little hiccups here and there, some internet issues, and now it's saying it's a good connection. It totally figures. As soon as I say thank you, goodbye, and it's like, hey, your connection's great. That's, that's the joy of the internet. So listen, thank you so very, very much for stopping by. Go watch a whole bunch more videos out there. There's a, a lot of stuff happening on PowerCab. Familiarize yourself with it. Get down to your local authorized Line 6 dealer. Check it out. Go back and look at some of my previous videos here from the Helix Hour. We just had Eric Klein on last week. A really, really cool uh, talk about Helix, how it works with PowerCab, and a bunch of other good stuff as well, too. I'm going to let everybody go. I can't uh, thank you enough for taking a little bit of time out of your afternoon. And we will see you very, very soon. Thanks so much. You guys all rock. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you for watching the Helix Hour. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. An extra special thank you to the staff at Line 6 for their continued support. If you've not yet subscribed, please do so right now and feel free to share our content with your friends. See you next time on the Helix Hour.